to talk about uh, an approach to leukocoria. Uh, so that whenever you see a child in the clinic uh, with a white pupil reflex, then you have a framework um, uh, to uh, go back to and make the appropriate uh, diagnosis and uh, management plan. So leukocoria is the white pupil reflex as seen uh, in this child here, often picked up on uh, digital photographs that the family take. So it's always very useful to ask that history of when it first started and, and so on. The causes are retinoblastoma, which is one of the rarest causes, but probably the most serious, congenital cataract, persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous or persistent fetal vasculature, um, Coates disease, toxocara, retinopathy of prematurity, retinal astrocytic hamartoma, coloboma, familial exudative vitroretinopathy or FEVR, and uveitis or endophthalmitis. But leukocoria can also occur in normal eyes. This was a paper uh, where seven children uh, presented uh, with leukocoria, but they all had uh, normal fundi. And it's because you're taking an off-axis off digital photograph, so you're actually imaging the normal optic nerve. Coates disease uh, is a condition where you get um, an exudative retinopathy. You can see here there's a retinal detachment. There's a yellowy reflex underneath that. You can see here the retinal detachment again. These are not seeds. These are exudates. And um, the blood vessels are on the retinal surface. When you do a fluorescein angiogram, uh, you can see these telangiectatic uh, blood vessels, which is a hallmark of um, uh, Coates disease. When you do an ultrasound scan, you see a hyperechoic mass, but no calcification. And on a CT scan, you can see this hyperdense uh, globe compared to the normal vitreous. And that's because of protein exudation. But we don't often do CT scans in kids. We prefer MRI scans these days. So Coates disease is usually unilateral in about 80 percent. It's three times more common in boys. Uh, otherwise, uh, these individuals are healthy, no systemic associations, and we don't know really what causes it. You get a yellow lipid rich subretinal and intraretinal exudation associated with retinal vascular abnormalities, which include telangiectasia, tortuosity of vessels, aneurysmal dilatations, and areas of avascularity. And there is a variable clinical presentation. And the shields classified Coates disease stage one, where there's only telangiectasia, stage two, where you start to get exudation, 2A being extrafoveal exudates, and 2B being um, foveal exudates. Stage three, you get an exudative retinal detachment. 3A is subtotal detachment. 3B is total detachment. Stage four is a total detachment with glaucoma. And stage five is end stage advanced disease. And that correlated in their paper with vision, having uh, good vision in stage one and very poor vision in stage four and five. Uh, PHPV or the um, other term for it in the literature, PFV, persistent fetal vasculature, is uncertain etiology as well. It occurs in healthy full-term individuals. There's anomalous development of the primary vitreous, which continues to persist as the secondary vitreous forms. It's a unilateral condition. There's no family history. And the clinical features are pupil, uh, pupillary st strands across the iris. You can get a Mittendorf dot on the back of the lens. You get retrolenticular membranes, retinal displays your detachment. The eye is small, microphthalmia, microcornea, shallow anterior chamber, persistent tunica vasculosa lentis, cataract, central fibrovascular stalk from the disc, and a retinal detachment. When you do an ultrasound, it confirms a retinal detachment or the stalk of PFV, and often it can look like this with those uh, clinical features. Uh, FEVR is uh, where there's been a failure of peripheral retinal vascularization. There's often a family history as it's uh, autosomal dominant inheritance. You get bilateral peripheral retinal avascularity, though it can be asymmetric. And sometimes the milder eye, you only pick up the avascular change on fluorescein angiography. Uh, you can get neovascularization, a fibrovascular mass, falciform 
retinal folds and retinal traction causing straightening of the blood vessel. So here, here is a case. You can see these fibrovascular changes with the uh, stalk and on fluorescein angiography areas of uh, avascularity with abnormal uh, vasculature. And in this kind of case, uh, dilate the parents and examine them. If you can't see anything clinically that resembles this, then you might need to do a fluorescein angiogram in the parents. Coloboma is where there's an incomplete closure of the embryonic fissure during fetal development, as in this case. You see this sharply demarcated, glistening white area with like a bowl-shaped excavation. ROP is a failure of development of the normal retina in premature neonates, so always ask a birth history. Uh, they've been exposed to high oxygen levels after birth and they get abnormal neovascularization, uh, fibrosis and retinal uh, detachment. <clears throat> the astrocytic hamartoma can be part of the tuberous sclerosis complex or it can be uh, an isolated finding. You get this sessile, slightly elevated lesion in the nerve fiber layer of the retina, often described as being mulberry-like. can be giant type like this one, that mimics retinoblastoma, and this eye had to be enucleated. Retinoblastoma uh, is the commonest primary intraocular malignancy of childhood. It occurs in one in 18,000 live births, and that means about 50 new cases um, in the UK, of which about half are managed in London. Uh, the clinical features are leukocoria, the white reflex, a squint, so any child with a squint should have a fundus check. And sometimes children present with neovascular glaucoma, orbital inflammation, or a hypopian. There are um, two main growth patterns of retinoblastoma and one less uh, uh, well-known uh, growth pattern, which I will go through. So the exophytic type of growth is where there's subretinal growth. Uh, there are subretinal seeds, and this can simulate Coates disease. But the clue is that the leukocorian retinoblastoma is white, like this child, compared to um, the uh, Coates disease, where it is a kind of yellowy color, so xanthocoria rather than leukocoria. On ultrasound in uh, retinoblastoma, there's a calcified mass. And when you do a fluorescein in retinoblastoma, there's no light bulb telangiectasia. And here also note the vessels are diving into the tumor. They're feeding the tumor. In Coates disease, you don't generally see that. Endophytic retinoblastoma is where the growth is into the vitreous cavity, like this case. You get vitreous seeding. Uh, it can simulate vitritis, endophthalmitis, and uveitis. And on ultrasound scan, uh, it is calcified. Fluorescein angiography shows the feeder vessels in the arterial phase feeding the tumor, you can see intrinsic vessels in the early venous phase, and there's hyperfluorescence in the late venous phase. Ancillary tests were well, ultrasound. We do during the examination under anesthesia, and you see calcification, as in this case, big mass in the eye with areas of calcification. CT scan here shows a bilateral case, calcified masses in uh, both eyes. But these days we avoid CT scans because of radiation exposure. These children have a uh, cancer syndrome and you don't want to give them excess radiation. We never biopsy uh, to make a diagnosis in retinoblastoma. If you do MRI scan on T1, the tumor here is slightly brighter than the vitreous and on T2, it is darker than the vitreous. The third less well-known type of retinoblastoma is the diffuse infiltrating type. Here, a child was brought into the accident and emergency clinic at Moorfields uh, with um, uh, this change. And you can see there's a pseudo-hypopian, there's some fluffy material in the anterior chamber, but there's no posterior synechiae. The um, uh, conjunctiva and episcleral vessels all look normal. There's no ciliary flush. So immediately that should sell, set uh, alarm bells ringing. When you look in the retina, you can see some whitening. And you must ask yourself the question, could it be inflammatory? Could it be infectious or could it be neoplastic? Uh, 
If it's inflammatory, think of panuveitis. If it's infectious, think of an endophthalmitis. If it's neoplastic, a retinoblastoma. You do an ultrasound scan and you can see here uh, a mass with some calcified spots in it. The mass was quite uh, um, broad, 7.1 by 3.6 millimeters with an elevation of 2.8 millimeters. There were lots of vitreous opacities and there was a little calcification as well. This third type of retinoblastoma growth pattern was first described at the Institute of Ophthalmology in this paper in 1960. Here is the photograph from that paper, almost like the case I showed you. And here is the enucleated eye. You can see this uh, kind of fairly flat undulating thickening. And this masquerades as uveitis, panophthalmitis, or vitreous hemorrhage sometimes. So retinoblastoma can initially be diagnosed as uh, uveitis or misdiagnosed, really. And what are the results? Well, this was a classical paper in 1969 uh, where they looked at enucleated eyes um, that were eventually enucleated for retinoblastoma. And they found that 7% of those 618 cases were initially misdiagnosed as inflammation. Panophthalmitis, endophthalmitis, uveitis, TB, syphilitic uveitis, and then unspecified inflammatory eye disease. And the interesting thing was that mortality in this misdiagnosed group was 64%, and in the prompt diagnosis group was 23%. So delaying that diagnosis or misdiagnosing is not good because retinoblastoma is a very aggressive tumor. Um, so how do you differentiate retinoblastoma from uveitis? Well, in retinoblastoma, remember, there's a hereditary component in 40%. The gene is a tumor suppressor gene. It's autosomal dominant inheritance. And you need both uh, copies of the gene, both alleles, to be mutated to get the tumor. And that's the double hit hypothesis. In retinoblastoma, generally, you see no posterior synechiae, no cataract, no fibrosis unlike this case of Toxocara with the fibrotic retinal fold. And unless the tumor is very advanced, you won't see any uh, pain or conjunctival hyperemia. Uh, so those are all important clues. Well, how are we now in the modern era? The answer is we're getting better at diagnosing this uh, type of retinoblastoma. Out of uh, 1,500 cases at Will's Eye, uh, 2% had the diffuse type, and it can be bilateral. So a total of 34 eyes in this study. It's an older age at diagnosis, four years old, whereas uh, you know the other types of retinoblastoma tend to be in the first two years of life. And the oldest child in this study was 16 years old. The referring diagnosis in three quarters of the patients were correct, retinoblastoma. Uveitis in three eyes, Coates disease in one, trauma in one, and unspecified retinal problem in another three. What do you see normally clinically? Well, uh, you can see tumor seeds on the corneal endothelium in a quarter. You can see stromal edema in almost 10%, pseudohypopian in a third, hyphema in 9%, iris neovascularization in a half, and iris tumor nodules in uh, 18%. In the posterior segment, you see an extensive ill-defined retinoblastoma infiltrating the retina. Mean basal diameter of 20 millimeters with a flat or undulating retinal thickening. You see vitreous tumor seeds in almost all the cases in 91%. Vitreous hemorrhage in a quarter and calcification in uh, almost 80%. And all these cases were enucleated. Retinoblastoma can masquerade as orbital cellulitis. So any child that presents uh, with a preceptal or orbital cellulitis uh, to accident and emergency must have a dilated fundus check done so that um, retinoblastoma can be ruled out. In this, cases, in this uh, series, 14 cases presented in this way. That's almost 5% with a cellulitis type picture. Uh, nine were bilateral, five were unilateral. And in these cases, retinoblastoma occupies 80 to 100 percent of the globe. The tumor then starts to necrose, which causes this periorbital inflammation. Blood cultures are usually negative. Uh, 
Two of the patients were pyrexial. Most of these eyes were enucleated and some were salvaged in, with radiotherapy. Um, I hasten to add, you will get a, a lecture in the uh, oncology uh, part of the retina module talking more about retinoblastoma treatment, but radiotherapy was done in this era, uh, in the late 90s, but is no longer done for retinoblastoma. So what are the clues? What is the framework for you to uh, tackle that patient? Well, the clue starts with the history. Firstly, the age. If it's less than two years old, then it's more likely to be retinoblastoma or persistent fetal vasculature. Older than two years of age, more likely to be Coates disease. Important questions to ask in the history. Has there been pain, redness, photophobia, a squint or blurred vision? When did the leukocoria start? Was uh, the reflex normal at one point or has it always been abnormal? If it was normal once, it could be an acquired cause, could be retinoblastoma or Coates disease. If it's always been abnormal, it's more likely to be a congenital or early onset cause like PFV or cataract. Ask about family history. Uh, family history is positive in about 10% of retinoblastoma. Remember, FEVR is autosomal dominantly inherited and colobomas are associated with the PAC6 gene defect. Medical history, skin lesions, um, retinitis uh, with um, uh, retinal detachments can occur in incontinentia pigmenti. Was there perinatal infection, the torch infections that are listed on the slide? Is there a history of prematurity? Think about ROP. Are there pets? Think about toxoplasma and toxocara. Was there birth trauma? Think about vitreous hemorrhage uh, or cataract. Other medical history, is there a history of juvenile idiopathic arthritis? Think uveitis. Tuberous sclerosis, think astrocytoma. Infection, think endogenous endophthalmitis. Ocular trauma associated with cataract, vitreous hemorrhage or retinal detachment. Then you start examining the eye. What is the color of that abnormal reflex? If it's white, it tends to be retinoblastoma. If it's yellow, tends to be Coates disease. If it's gray, tends to be cataract. Laterality, unilateral cases, well, retinoblastoma, uh, about 60% are unilateral. Coates disease is usually unilateral. PFV is very rarely bilateral, usually unilateral. Toxocara, vitreous hemorrhage and retinal detachment, more likely to be unilateral. Bilateral, 40% of retinoblastoma is bilateral. FEVR is usually bilateral, but can be asymmetrical. And ROP is usually bilateral. What can be unilateral or bilateral? Well, uh, Coates disease can occur very rarely in a syndrome called fascio-scapulohumeral dystrophy. And then those Coates-like changes are bilateral. PFV is um, rarely bilateral. FEVR uh, can be uh, uni or bilateral, though classically is bilateral but symmetrical, and retinoblastoma can be uni or bilateral. Anterior segment examination. Mm -hmm. Microphthalmia, usually persistent fetal vasculature. Buphthalmos, usually advanced retinoblastoma. Raised intraocular pressure, uh, often with Coates disease, retinoblastoma, or retinal detachment. Is there material in the anterior chamber? If it's yellow, it's cholesterol, and that's Coates disease. If it's white and fluffy, it's retinoblastoma. If there are fine cells with synechiae and ciliary flush, more likely to be uveitis. Uh, is there an iris coloboma, which is associated with the fundus coloboma? Then you examine the fundus. Look at the vitreous. If it's clear, usually Coates disease. If there are seeds, usually retinoblastoma. If there is vitritis, think about toxocara, uveitis, and endophthalmitis. If there's a hyaloid canal, persistent fetal vasculature. Look at the optic nerve. If it's excavated, think about morning glory syndrome or coloboma. Bergmeister's papilla or a stalk to the disc with a tractional retinal detachment 
is uh, usually a persistent fetal vasculature. Retinal vessels, if they have uniform dilation with tortuosity, and if there's a retinal detachment, vessels dip into the retinal detachment, then that is retinoblastoma. If there are irregular saccular enlargements and telangiectasia, and if there's a retinal detachment, the vessels are on the surface of the retinal detachment, then more likely to be Coates disease. If there's peripheral dragging and fibrovascular proliferation, then that's uh, FEVR. The white reflex is very important. This is a public information campaign by a charity that uh, supports uh, retinoblastoma patients and their families called the Childhood Eye Cancer Trust in the UK. And they run these public information campaigns to um, make people aware of uh, the white reflex. So um, you will get a lot more in the oncology symposium on retinoblastoma uh, management and so on. Uh, and uh, I hope that's been a useful framework uh, in not only this course, but your future uh, practices uh, for looking at uh, cases that present with leukocoria.